you find yourself in a social situation that you have a perceived threat from a past experience, you got to notice, oh, my body is doing this. It's a neurotic holding pattern. It's a bad habit that you're doing with your body. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. Certain experiences in my past have caused me to be insecure about different aspects of myself, both physically and emotionally. I can often feel this tension in my body. It seems to arise habitually when I'm in social situations. How do I let go of this trauma? Any advice or experience with this? Thanks, and I appreciate your wisdom. So these movements and tensions in your bodies are habits. Wilhelm Reich called it neurotic holding patterns. They start off as acute responses to threats. You say traumas in your past, right? They begin as children when our body's very soft as um, acute responses to threats and perceived threats. But as we grow old because of the habit, they start to form themselves in our bodies. And just like with any habit, they become unconscious, right? What are some unconscious things that happen in our body out of habit, right? Uh, this is probably not the best example, but you smell, you smell carrot cake being cooked somewhere. You can't help it, but your mouth starts to drool because it's like, wow, that's familiar to me. And look, my body's doing something. You just noticing what's happening in your body is the first thing. You find yourself in a social situation that you have a perceived threat from a past experience. You got to notice, oh, my body is doing this. It's a neurotic holding pattern. It's a bad habit that you're doing with your body. But you're aware of it, which is great. A number of things. The fact that it's physical means that it can be resolved physically. And this is where bioenergetics comes in. You got to breathe into those tensions. You feel a tension in your belly. Notice, I'm actually physically holding my belly tight. I bring that up because I do that. When I notice that, I got to go, I got to release my breath. I notice, even like as I'm talking here, it's just habit. I talk, my pitch starts going up. I start talking loud. Habit. And it's due to tension in my body because I'm, aggress I'm an aggressive speaker. But that's not always useful. Especially if I'm talking, to, like I can do this through video. And if you just don't like me, you can turn me off. But if I'm talking to somebody face to face, especially like my children or women who are sensitive, I got to stop. <laughs> I got to go. Okay. And I, gotta, I have to control my body and, and speak a little differently. And I have to be self-conscious. I got to be aware of the tension in my body. Even now as I'm speaking, I keep feeling that beast wanting to rise up. It's right here. That beast is right here in me. I feel the tension in it. Right here. And it wants to grip. It wants to grip. Even my shoulders now. It wants to rise up out of my shoulders. <laughs> my arms want to move. This is why I'll never be a good guru. Like these good gurus, they sit, they sit calm. And they just talk calmly. Not me. I got all kinds of neurotic holding patterns. And I got all kinds of charism. And I, and I, just, go, I just roll with it because I, <laughs> I have fun with it. I know y'all enjoy hearing me get crazy. So I just roll with it. But if I'm being conscious, usually when I start talking, I'm going unconscious. I'm just ranting. But if I get conscious, I got to slow down. I got to stop. I got to check myself every so often. Because I have these neurotic holding patterns. So you become conscious of these patterns, which is good. But now you work to breathe into them. Like I just, you don't, might not have noticed. But I just stopped and I breathed into this right here. Even my eyes, my eyes start to relax. I'm doing this all the time. I got tension all over my body. So we have to become conscious, but then become masters over our bodies. 
I don't get out very often. I'm either on or I'm off when I'm at home because I'm either talking to you guys through these videos or I'm doing a, I'm making videos or I'm doing a, you know, people have me on their podcast or I'm doing a coaching call. So I turn myself, I let myself go. Or I'm off because I'm at home and I, you know, I'm just chilling with my family. I'm usually just, I'm off. I'm just eh, going about doing my things. I'm actually very quiet a lot of times around my family. But last week, I was invited for the first time in a long time out. Our neighbors, our neighbors, they had a, they're having a, they had a gender reveal. Apparently, it's a new kind of party people have with babies, and they light off fireworks, blue or, or red. So we went to a gender reveal, and these are all new people to me. You know, and, and so I was a little nervous, not super nervous, but like just self-aware. And knowing what I know, because I'm telling you exactly what I do when I was there, I had to keep full composure every time I'm talking with somebody. I'm having a conversation with someone. I got to stay in flow. I have to be listening. When you have these tensions in your body, it's because you're not listening. You got to listen and stop being so self-conscious. And a part of the way you do that is to make the conversation more about the other person. My old arrogant self would rather just walk away and don't talk to nobody. <laughs> I got problems. <laughs> I would rather not be there. Why? Because the effeminate part of me says, this is too uncomfortable. Just go. Don't talk to anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. And I make up excuses. I just don't want to talk to anybody because they're boring. No, the fact is, Elliot, you're uncomfortable. So I put myself into the fire. And I even told my wife <laughs> before we go, I was like, I'm going to be a nice guy. I'm going to be a nice guy. Nice Elliot is coming out because I knew it was, it was an opportunity for me to practice being a nice guy. So the whole time, it's, it's odd because I'm being hyper self-conscious but not self-centered. That's huge. That's big. Write that one down. You got to be hyper self-conscious or self-aware but not self-centered. I probably said it differently before, but I think you know what I mean. Be aware of yourself, but don't be focused on how you look. Be aware of yourself, but don't focus on yourself. Does that make sense? In other words, you have two types of attention. You have floodlight attention, right? What is floodlight attention? Big, broad, sweeping attention which is kind of like our, our subtle unconscious, is an awareness, but it's not focused. And then you have focused attention, like a spotlight. You should have a, a floodlight attention or awareness on yourself, mainly of your physiology, not your thoughts, not your judgments, not your feelings. Movement in your body. That's the floodlight. But you're... But your spotlight needs to be on the people and the conversation and being engaged. Do you see? Anyway, this is what I did, and it worked out well. But you got to put your, you got to, like I was saying about myself, you got to subject yourself to the, to the fire. So this requires practice. That's why I saw this as an opportunity to practice, because I don't practice very much. I'm, a, I'm basically a hermit. <laughs> I'm awkward when I get around people because I don't practice as much. But I want you, because you don't have the privilege of being a hermit like me, right? <laughs> I just work behind my, I just work on, I don't see people. I just talk to these screens. You might have to get out there in the business world. You might be trying to meet women. So you got to, what you got to do is you got to practice. Practice the things I'm talking about right now, but you've got, you need reps, so get out there and get more reps doing what I'm talking about. And by and by, you become a natural dude. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war as well as how it's affecting your health, 
your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.